Hello world. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rosa. This channel is for anyone who wants to learn about all things intuitive pregnancy, enjoyable and orgasmic birth outcomes, and all around wants to be a revolutionary parent. Come be human with me. In this video, we're going to talk about breast pumping. All right. Breast pumping is um, a very loved but also a very hated part of child rearing, child raising. Um, looking over here at my notes, uh, essentially, the one, the first thing, right, that's going to help you be successful in your pumping journey is your mindset. And the way that I established a process with my mindset was by number one, staying committed. No matter what, you are going to either breast pump, breastfeed, or commit to the formula process. Every type of feeding strategy is going to have its own process and first things first, you got to be committed. Number two, educate yourself. You can lean on consultants all you want. You can listen to, you know, other moms and get guidance, but the more that you arm yourself with education so that you can have the tools in the moments, the better. Number three, allow for frustration. I can't tell you how many people, I've lost count at this point, how many people have given up at that first try? Oh, I didn't have enough milk. Oh, they didn't take to the boob. Oh, this or that. Allow yourself to be frustrated for a while. And that really just goes back to the mindset cycle number one of commitment. How committed are you to whatever process you're choosing? Have compassion with your volume and with the time that it takes to get the volume. For example, um, it took me three months to get my daughter from bottle to breast. But during those three months, I was on a very strict pumping schedule. But of course, I had to be very flexible with myself because having an emergency C-section and having my child be in the NICU for seven days, my boobs were just like not on the same hormonal timeline as a mother who would have a normal birth. So I had to be very, very patient with myself. And it took a while. In the beginning, I was only pumping a very small amount of milk. And uh, of course, there were times where I didn't feel like I was gonna ever make enough milk for my daughter. And that was heartbreaking. But guess what? It just took a lot of time. It took quite a bit of time. It took about a month um, for me to get into the breast pumping um, routine. It took about a month for me to get into the breast pumping routine. And just as all babies are different, all boobs are different. And you need to get to know those babies and you need to get to know your boobies because you want to set yourself up for success. It is possible to set yourself up for success regardless of the limiting beliefs that you might have. Um, another piece from my experience is I started out pumping for 45 minutes. I would pump every session for 45 minutes and only produce like two ounces of milk. And by the end of that first month, the same two ounces I would get in 25 minutes. So that was a huge win. All right, another piece about pumping is that it's crucial for you to find the right fit. Your phalange size is gonna make a world of a difference in your experience pumping and overall in the amount that you can produce. So at the hospital, the breastfeeding consultant, lactation consultant told me nothing about phalange size. She did not guide me in how to measure the diameter of my nipple and select the, the correct phalange. So what I do believe also is that, be, like going back to what I just described to you, how long it took me, 45 minutes to produce two ounces, that I believe was all attributed to my phalange size. So maybe if I had the right phalange size in the beginning, it would have been fine, regardless my commitment and my patience and allowing myself to be frustrated right if i if i didn't get frustrated 
I wouldn't have found my solution. So it's really important just to like to allow that space of frustration. Purchase a silicone insert for comfortability and practice positioning it. Sometimes, you know, your nipple can be too high in the tube, too low in the tube. You just want it to get just right at Goldilocks positioning. The pumps, so many different types of pumps, right? And you really want it to fit your lifestyle. So I will go through three different brands of pumps later in this video, stay tuned. And always start on the lowest setting. Don't, I mean, if you have really trained your nipples, um, this is another side piece about pumping that I really enjoyed. If you want to go from pumping to breastfeeding, pumping is really nice because it is a way to train your nipples so that once you get to breastfeeding, it's not excruciatingly painful. All right, nipples truly are resilient. Um, these, these are a piece of our bodies that can that is flexible, that expands, that contracts, that has so many different features to it. I think they're absolutely fascinating. Um, and I'm grateful for the first pregnancy that I didn't have any cracking or bleeding. So um, if you do have cracking or bleeding, then you can purchase. I will link down below a nipple butter um, by Earth Mama that I really enjoy, but it's good. It's not just good for your nipples, it's good for your lips, it's good for your hands. Um, so I loaded up on this nipple butter that I never actually needed to use. More uh, power doesn't always mean more milk when it comes to pumps. So, you know, you're thinking like, oh yeah, I want, I want more, um, I want more power, I want more suctionability. And that's not necessarily true. Um, I've never personally milked a cow before, but if you've ever seen a cow being milked or milked a cow yourself, or maybe watched it on TV, it's really all about the mechanism of pumping, of milking. Um, so very similar when it comes to nipples. Okay, next we're gonna talk about the bottle. The bottle size and nipple matters and it will progress over time. So in the hospital, if you do have a hospital birth and you do have to pump in the hospital, you will receive varying different sizes of bottles, which is super duper helpful um, because it does as, as you progress in your volume, don't get a big bottle and only, you know, when you begin and you only have a little bit, that's really crushing on the, on the morale. It's really crushing on the self-esteem. So little bottle first, fill that up and then work your way up. You'll thank me later. The Medela bottle, and I'll go into the brands in a little bit, but the Medela bottle has absolutely been my favorite. I don't know, the cylindrical shape um, is just so cool. And it has a very flat bottom. So wherever you were to sit it, it would just work. Another bottle that I used was the Even Flow bottles. And so I was very excited about, you know, less plastic, more sustainable. So I asked my loved ones to buy me glass bottles and came to find that in the beginning, um, babies can't hold glass bottles. I mean, obviously a newborn isn't gonna hold the glass bottle, but it was a lot more, um, it made me be more cautious, right? About like, what if you were to like drop the bottle on their face or something? Um, so I really do love the glass bottle concept and I really do love the even flow bottles, but they really haven't served us very much. Um, we're at 14 weeks and the bottle that we like the most, um, that my daughter likes the most is the mason jar bottle. And now she's over one years old and she's like strong enough to hold it herself. The even flow bottles are really cool. So I don't know. And that's the hard part, you know, you don't wanna waste money, but you also wanna try things. So I don't know, maybe there should be a company out there should um, exchange bottles. I know they do a nipple uh, type like test out. They send you five nipples. Not sure what company that is. I'll, I'll find it and I'll link it down below. Um, all right, moving on to nipples. Uh, I have here nipple progression based on needs and there are so many nipples, right? So that's kind of what I was just saying about the company that has a very varying different types of nipples. Um, so babies have different like mouth sh shapes and different types of nipples will be more comfortable 
um, on their mouth. So let's just observe the two examples that I have here. Okay, so this is the even flow, right nipple. You can't see it that well, but there's like a little curvature. It's like a head, right, to the nipple. And then here, there's, there's no head. It's just straight. My daughter prefers this to this. Um, and it just depends on the baby. So, so moving um, on to the reviews of the different types of pumps that I used. The Medela in style pump. Um, I got a free, my girlfriend gave me a free Medela in style pump. So this is a big kind of like more chunky pump, but it has a lot of power. And so I was really um, excited about having this pump because it's the same brand that I had in the hospital. Um, and not to say that it wasn't great, but it was very clunky and the battery pack was outside of the actual pump. Um, so this was more useful like if I was sitting and static in one place, but it wasn't very easy. Like I would have had to put it in a backpack or something if I wanted to, you know, do stuff and walk around the house. Um, so not super practical or functional in my particular lifestyle. All right, so the Ameda pump was the pump that I got through Medi-Cal. Um, thank you, Medi-Cal. And I was a little bit judgy about this pump in the beginning. Um, I don't know. I thought it was just like inferior to the Medela pump, right? Because the Medela pump is like, I don't know, fancy and that's the one the hospital had. So sorry. Um, I ended up loving my Ameda pump. I loved it more even than the Medela and what I'll talk about next, the Willows. Um, anyways, the Ameda pump was pretty high quality. Um, this is the one that like only goes up to 25 minutes in a pumping session. I never went above like level six or seven um, in the like sucking power and it was very user friendly. Um, so for this pump, what I really liked about it, it was battery operated and totally um, independent. So you could do whatever, you could just clip it on your, your belt or you clip it on your sweater or clip it on your bra, right? Clip it on your bra, be under your clothes and you just free. You're free. Of course you have these like big pumps on your boobs, but you're, you're free to roam. And that's the best part is you're not attached to a cord. You're not attached to a big box. You're not attached to anything, but you know, this little mobile pump. Um, and what made it really easy for me is so I didn't have to keep buying batteries and batteries is I invested in rechargeable batteries. I had two sets of four rechargeable batteries so that I would just cycle these batteries and it was brilliant. So I am really happy with my Ameda pump, grateful for Medi-Cal. So highly recommend the Ameda pump. I don't know what the uh, model is or anything, but it's just the electric clip-on one that you get free for Medi-Cal. So the last pump I will talk about is the Willow pump. Um, if you've done any research into breast pumps, you may have already progressed into this space of wearable pumps. So these are pumps that have the, own, the, the very pump in their, in their devices um, and you put them like in your bra. So they, they pump by themselves. They're super um, practical, I guess. They're very expensive. I bought them used and quite frankly, I never really liked them. Um, my my output was lower every time I used them and they would have been expensive to like continue to buy bags and um, I don't know they just they're just wonky and obviously they don't recommend that you buy used ones but I wasn't in the position to buy new ones so uh, I did my best I really wanted to you know like expand into this space of pumping but at the end of the day the Amedas worked fine. Uh, the Willows really weren't user friendly as, as, as much as they were perfectly convenient. Um, but they only come with one charger. You have two pumps. You need to charge them separately and like, oh, buy a second charger. Like, I don't know. There's just like a little bit, a little bit too much work. And then one of them wouldn't, wouldn't pump right. And it was, just, there's like a lot of pieces and no, no, that's okay. Thanks. Another piece about pumping is that it's maintenance, it's work. Oh, and this is this is true with any type of like feeding style that you have with your baby, is it's all maintenance. And um, discipline makes things easier. <laughs> it does, wash your pumps every time. Um, it was really easy to get into this lazy pattern of just like soaking them and rinsing them. 
um, but you will find that like the the fat molecules in your breast milk are going to accumulate and not only is that bad sanitarily but it's also not good for like the quality of your pumping mechanism um, so truly just wash them every time you know buy buy the spe like the special little cleaning devices apparatuses for the pump um, it makes it more fun too and just you know like get into get into a groove like being a parent like making everything more fun or trying to I don't know just like creating a ritual around it giving yourself some type of like affirmation about cleaning your pumps like whatever you approach in parenthood and you're like oh fuck that. oh you know I don't want to do that again like build build a new relationship to it um because I know I definitely fell into a lot of potholes when I was you know first like becoming that's one piece of advice and another one is to wash your pumps every time you won't be sorry I just said that and I wrote it twice because it's so true and it's so necessary so wash your pumps wash them if you're gonna pump wash them some people have two sets that's helpful right so then you don't have to because it does get tired especially at that like 3 a.m 6 a.m pump time for a newborn like oof. um yeah and then the other one going back to what i mentioned about the ameda is like rechargeable batteries rechargeable batteries are going to save you money and it just like feels less wasteful um in terms of having the pump the last thing i'll leave you with friends is uh don't give up right don't give up whether you're committed to pumping whether you're committed to breastfeeding or whether you're committed to uh, bottle feeding, whether you're committed to working with your local milk bank, which they do exist. Um, so if you're struggling and don't want to um, feed your baby formula, then look for donors. There are plenty of women that have an oversupply and that really want to get it to babies in need. So last thing I'll leave you with is please do not give up. It gets better over time and struggling serves to give the best stories thank you for your time thank you for listening thank you for being human with me if you like today's content please don't forget to like subscribe and click the notification bell i am committing um i dabbled definitely in youtube but i am committing to one video a week i'm gonna do my best um don't miss out on the next video if you feel called to be a part of the community that helps this channel grow, that would be fantastic because I am a stay-at-home mom and a full-time caregiver for my mother, also pregnant with baby number two, and we're really trying to um, do our best to support our families in the best way we can. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time.